Do you know what makes a muscle grow? That's a question I posed on my Instagram account um, a little over a week ago. And I said that uh, I'd be producing this uh, short tutorial on that um, to try to explain it in, in a really simplified term terms. Um, and I, I gave people a chance to, to get a head start on it and look it up. And whether you did that or not, um, I, I hope to be able to explain this clearly enough that uh, it's not necessary, but it, it sure would have been helpful if you had a little bit of a basic understanding of what what people are saying out there and what, uh, what the general gist of uh, muscle growth entails. So, uh, without further ado, let's let's get started on my version. Uh, this is the simplified, slimmed down, cut and dried version of what makes a muscle grow. Now, there's there's a difference between what makes a muscle grow bigger or muscle development, and what makes a muscle grow stronger. For for our purposes in this discussion, uh, and and for the majority of most people's training. Those two have a, have a lot of overlap. If you make a muscle stronger, it's, it's going to get bigger. Many times it's going to get stronger by getting bigger. One of the adaptations of evolution um, isn't to just get big muscles without strength. That's just not really a, that's not really something that would pay off in, the, in, uh, in evolutionary terms. Getting stronger without getting bigger might but for our purposes, without, without hashing that all up into little tiny pieces for now, let's just assume that if you get a muscle to grow, you're also going to get it to, get, to have some increase in strength as well. They're, they're very concomitant um, for, for much of your training. So let, let's, uh, let's keep that in mind and let's ask what makes a muscle grow. And in this case, what we're, what we're talking about is the cross-sectional area of the muscle. So if we think of muscles like tubes and they, and they shorten uh, to get to, to, to move our joints around, the, the larger cross-sectional area that that muscle has, the more strength it can develop. And we can actually pretty much for human muscle, we can, we can uh, within reason, um, get that down to a, to a certain amount. How many uh, kilogram meters, uh, I mean newtons, it'll, it'll create uh, per square centimeter. And that's pretty well known. Now there are some things that can change that, like the density and number of each individual fiber within the muscle itself. But for the most part, the more cross-sectional area, the stronger a muscle is, and the, the more force it can, and can create. And so that's the, the, the gist of what's going to happen here when we try to increase our muscles. Whether you want size or strength, um, the principle will be the same. So we hear a lot about the gross over simplification of tearing it down, it being a muscle, tearing a muscle down to build it back up. And while that, that's a working definition that will get you that will get you to work harder at least. At least that'll get you to work harder. But it's not really what happens. And the, the danger is that if we take that to its logical conclusion, the more I tear up a muscle, the bigger it will become. The more the more I tear it down, the more I build it up. And that's classic American thinking that more is better. And it's not true. Um, muscle damage has nothing to do with muscle stimulation a and vice versa. Muscle stimulation doesn't really damage the muscle. I like to use the term insulting the muscle. We have to stress the muscle to get it to grow. If you ask a muscle to do something it can already do, why would it change? It just survives the task, and that's that. It is when you ask a muscle to do something that it is hard for it to do, that is maybe temporarily impossible for it to do, that it says, whoa, wait a minute, um, that was really, really hard. And 
And I think this guy is going to do this again on a regular basis. So the next time he tries that stunt, I'll be ready for him. And that's the, the basis of, of, of uh, compensating for the insult. The muscle gets a slap in the face, an insult, not damaged. It doesn't get broken. It doesn't get ruined. It gets stressed. And because of the stress, and because the muscle has a hard time keeping up with the demand, it adapts. And it adapts in a way that uh, increases protein synthesis in the muscle and possibly some other ways. There's possibly some more than hypertrophy going on. There might be something called hyperplasia where it's not just getting bigger, but it's getting more fibers inside. Um, but that's for another topic again. That's for another day again. What, what happens is I want you to get the idea that there's a sweet spot to this stress. You can't just go in and kill yourself, uh, figuratively speaking, with weights and expect the body to adapt to that. And the more that you kill yourself, the stronger you will get. What you will do that way is either get injured or you will endeavor to uh, embark on a, a long and slow decline in, in the form of overtraining. And, and that's not going to get you anywhere. So let's think of the, so we have to have a demand that is somewhere above easy. And typically that's 70 to 80% in, this, in, in most studies, 80% of what you can move, your one rep max. You have to at least stress the muscle at about 80% if you want it to grow. If you do it at 50%, just you're, you're asking the muscle to do half in the, in the gym of what it could possibly do. And it won't respond to half. You'll get tired doing it, but you won't get stronger doing it because it's only, you're only asking it to do half of what it's capable of doing. You have to ask it something nearer, <laughs> nearer what its capacity is. Having said that, you do not have to ask it to do 100% of what it can do to get it to grow. That will also lead to overtraining because the stress on the joints and the neuromuscular, the, the neuro, neuro, neurological system is, is too much. And, and, and young people, uh, beginners, they like to max out, uh, you know, whenever they think they've gotten stronger. And a lot of that isn't actual strength. It's just learning um, on the neuro side of neuromuscular. But that's not necessary either. So there's a sweet spot of how much we need to stress a muscle to allow it to receive the signal to adapt, yet not, um, yet not actually uh, kill it, quote unquote, kill it, and, and, and break it down. So it has to be between, eh, you, could, you could argue 70, but let's just say 80, that's a pretty well agreed number, between 80 and 90%. Um, depending on the reps that you do, uh, that the stimulus needs to be at to tell the muscle, hey, this is hard and you need to adapt to it. If it's too easy, you won't adapt. And if it's too hard, you'll overtrain and not be able to recover. So I, I liken this to um, a, 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 uh, a callus on your hand. You, you want to produce a big, strong, thick callus on your hand. So what you do is you go in and you rub it and you irritate it, you insult it a little bit. And you keep insulting it a little bit and a little bit and a little bit, repetition after repetition, day after day. And the body will, will sense the irritation and it will sense the need to thicken up that skin there. And it will, during that day after the irritation, it will start to lay down more skin there and you'll, you'll start to build that callus. If you go in and you, and you dig a big gouge in your hand and saying, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really get a thick callus, so I'm going to dig a big gouge in my hand. And every day you go in and dig, you know, dig that wound deeper and deeper, you, <laughs> you never build the callus. So there's a sweet spot to this idea of insulting the muscle irritating the muscle, stressing the muscle, but not, um, not, not, not digging a big hole that you can't get out of. You, you have to, 
You have to, to plan your workouts. You have to understand that some intensity is necessary, above 80% probably, but too much intensity won't get you anywhere. It'll just, it'll just get you a big deep wound instead of a nice thick callus. And, and if, you, uh, <laughs> if you wanna be amazed at how thick calluses can be, um, look on the internet at some of these people in Africa who never wear shoes. They've never had shoes on their feet in their life. And the soles of their feet are so thick that they can walk on any surface, including broken glass, and, and it doesn't even bother them because they have built a callus up so incredibly thick. And so you, you want to build up strength and muscle size in that way. You want the muscle to continually grow and get larger and larger and be able to produce more and more force to be able to respond to the, to the progressive increases in what you're asking it to do. And that's, that's, a, that's the other part of this equation. So you have to stress it and you have to let it heal and recover. So that's where I think people get this, tear it down and build it back up. It has to recover from the stress. And so that's, that's why the oversimplification kind of works. But then you have to, you can't give it the same stress over and over again. You, you can't go in and bench 100 pounds uh, for two years and expect that at the end of two years, somehow you'll be able to bench 500 pounds. You have to progressively make the stress or the insult a little more aggressive and a little more aggressive and a little more aggressive and a little more insulting and a little more difficult to the muscle. And over time, it responds by getting super strong and super big. Remember, it gets bigger because it wants to, to produce more force. And it's the need for force that creates the, um, the response in size. So you, you're, you really want to get stronger if you want to get bigger and, and sort of vice versa. Um, and and I, I admit that there are certain ways to train that are more specific to that. But um, the, the, the basic premise applies here. You, you, don't want to, you don't want to believe in this mythology that the harder I train, the more damage I do, the better off I'll be somehow. The more damage you do, the more damaged you will be. You have to, you have, to have the right amount of insult, of, of stimulation to grow. It has to be not too easy, not too hard, like Goldilocks. It has to be just right. And, and <laughs> pretty much we know what that, what that is. It's about 80 to 90 percent. And, and there's some re, 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 that, that could argue 75, maybe. Uh, I'm not going to split hairs. What I'm going to tell you is the general principle is this. This is how a muscle grows. You ask it to do something that's difficult. It, it struggles to meet that demand. It understands that you're going to do this repeatedly in, in, um, uh, in training. Otherwise, it's just something to be survived and not adapted to. So if one training session doesn't, doesn't cause any adaptation, it's repeated bouts of a training session where you control this amount of stress that you put on the muscle, demand for force. And as that demand for force goes up, the callus builds thicker and thicker and thicker and your muscles get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I hope that was enlightening a little bit. Um, I kind of poo-pooed it a little bit, and I understand that, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't being, um, I, I don't want you to think I'm being snide about it. I'm just trying to oversimplify this in the way that it's been oversimplified in the tear down to build up, but only a little bit more accurately. So I know I'm going in the same direction as those people. And I'm, I'm oversimplifying this to a great degree. But I gave you a little bit clearer picture, I hope, of what actually happens. And I, I hope this is helpful to you in determining the correct stress load for your training. So thanks for listening.